Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and in today's tutorial I'm super excited to be sharing with you our Margot the Mallard duck pattern. This is one of my favorite patterns. It works up really quickly and it'd be great for any type of market prep or gift. So without further ado, let's jump in. So for today's project, we're going to need quite a lot of yarn. If you're making the mallard duck version of this pattern, you can also make this pattern with just straight yellow for like a duckling or straight white for a duck. But if you're going to make the mallard um, version, you're going to need lots of yarn. So I'm going to be using this baby snuggle yarn in the green, which is my favorite green um, in these yarns. We're going to need some white. So I'm using the honey bunny white and then the Honey Bunny Brown for the third color change, and then this Honey Bunny beige color for the fourth color change. We're also gonna need some orange, and that's gonna be for the feet and the beak. And then we're also gonna just need a little bit of black worsted yarn. Um, part of this is for uh, face shaping, and the other um, thing is for um, the eyebrows. So just have about two strands of um, like 12 to 16 inches and um, that should be enough for you. We are also going to need our crochet hooks. I have my 5.5 millimeter crochet hook here from Furl's Crochet that I'll be using for the main pattern. And then I also have just a smaller hook, the 4.5 millimeter, and that's just for um, weaving in ends and such. I find it easier to use a smaller one. We'll need a darning needle, some scissors, some safety eyes. These are just 16 millimeter safety eyes with like a glitter um, color. Um, you can also embroider eyes if you don't feel comfortable with the safety eyes. We'll need some fabric pins, a stitch marker, and some fiber fill. So after we've gathered all of our supplies, we can jump into the pattern. All right, so for this pattern, we are going to be working from the head down to the body. Um, it's all going to be worked in one piece. So we're going to start at the head and for the head, again, if you're going to be doing the mallard duck version of this pattern, we're going to be starting with our green yarn. Now for uh, round one of our head, we're going to start off with a magic ring. Now if you're unsure how to make a magic ring, I will link in the comments um, a tutorial that you can watch. I would say you should know how to do a magic ring and work in the round. Um, before trying to complete this project. So once we have our magic ring here, we're going to place eight single crochets inside the ring. So going over both those strands, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we'll just pull that closed and there is our first round. Now we're going to place our stitch marker. I personally like to use my scrap strand of yarn if you've watched my videos before um, but you can use these um, like clippy ones if you prefer that. I just never learned this way um, and I find these kind of confusing so but you can use whatever you know you do. You don't have to do what I do. Just place a stitch marker so you know where your round ends. All right, so moving on for round two, we're gonna do an increase round. So an increase is two single crochets in one stitch. So we're gonna insert our hook here in the first stitch and we're gonna place one single crochet. And then we're gonna go right back into that same stitch and place another single crochet. So we just turned one stitch into two. We're gonna do that all the way around uh, for all eight stitches. And so your stitch count at the end of round two should be 16. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. I'm just going to tighten my center a little bit again and move my stitch marker up. And that is round two completed. 
So moving on to round three, we're going to do the combination single crochet one and an increased stitch. So single crochet into this first stitch here and an increase into the second. We're going to repeat this a total of eight times for a stitch count of 24 at the end of round three. And there is round three completed. Now moving on to rounds, four rounds, four, five, and six, so three rounds, we're just going to do single crochet 24. So that's one single crochet in each stitch around for the, the rounds four through six. So I will complete these rounds off camera and I'll meet you back here for round seven. All right, so this is what we're looking like after round six is completed. Now moving on for round seven, we're going to create some shaping in the face. Um, so what we're going to do for this round is we're going to do the combination single crochet and an increase. So single crochet and increase. And we're gonna repeat this two more times. So a total of three times. So single crochet, increase, that's two. Single crochet, increase, that's three. Next, we're going to place six single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. Next, we're going to do the combination again of single crochet and increase. So single crochet and increase. And again, we're gonna do this three times. Single crochet, increase, that's two. Single crochet, increase, that's three. Finally, to finish off this round, we're going to do single crochet six again. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And there is round seven completed. At this point, we should have a total of 30 stitches. Now moving on for rounds eight, nine, and 10, so three rounds, we are going to do single crochet 30. So again, we're gonna go through and do one single crochet in each stitch around for rounds eight through 10. So I will complete these rounds off camera again, and then I will meet you back here for round 11. All right, so this is what we're looking like after round 10 is completed. And if you can see, uh, when we did those increase um, sections on round seven, they kind of created this shaping that uh, is gonna make it so this is the top of the head, and then these are gonna be like the cheeks of the duck. So that's what that shaping is for. So keeping in mind when we're placing our eyes, these like out pieces are gonna be on the side. So we're gonna to wanna to place our eyes kind of in the center here. But before we do that, we're gonna keep going on here to round 11. So for round 11, we are going to do the combination single crochet three and a decrease. So one, two, three, and a decrease. And I always like to do invisible decreases so we're gonna go under the front loop of this first stitch, and then into the second stitch here, we're gonna place go under the second that first loop again. So we'll have two loops from one stitch from each and our regular loop. We're gonna yarn over and pull through those two loops. So we should have two in our hook. Yarn over and pull through. So you just made two stitches into one. Now we'll do that again, and we're gonna repeat this a total of six times. So we're gonna single crochet three, one, two, three, and we'll do a decrease. So insert under the front loop of one stitch, 
and front loop of the next, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Just keep going along, we're gonna repeat that, and you should have a total of 24 stitches at the end of round 11. All right, moving on to round 12, we're going to do the combination single crochet two and a decrease. So single crochet one and two and a decrease. And we're gonna repeat this again six times for a stitch count of 18 at the end of round 12. There is round 12 completed. Now before we move on, we are going to just stuff our head and we're gonna place our eyes. Now I personally find um, stuffing first works better for me, just so I can see what we're looking like because it always looks different once it's stuffed and I hate misplacing my eyes. So I always like to stuff first and then place my eyes. Some people do it the opposite. Um, because they find it hard to place the eyes when the stuffing is in there, but I just feel like you can't get a good image of what is going on with the stuffing without the stuffing in. So I'm just going to grab some of my fiber fill here, and I'm just going to lightly stuff the head here. And I always just like to sweep my stuffing out to the edges and then stuff the center. That way I know that everything is kind of being stuffed evenly. And for this project in particular, you want to make sure that those cheek portions on the sides are well stuffed as well, just so you get that definition of the cheeks. Just like that. Now we will stuff a little bit more, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but that's kind of what we're looking like. There we go. So next I'm going to just place my eyes. So my cheeks are just right here. So we want to place our, our eyes on round seven and eight. So I'm just going to count down um, from the top here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, so seven and eight. I'm just going to roughly place one of my eyes and I still have plastic on it. Um, and then we want to have about um, six stitches in between the eyes. So I'm actually just going to move this over a tad. I'm going to grab my other eye. One, two, three, four, five, six. So just roughly place that one there. Now it's going to look strange right now, but you have to just trust the process because once we're finished here, we're going to bring these eyes in when we do our face shaping. So that's why you kind of want them to be a tad bit apart because um, if they're too close together and then you do the shaping, then they're going to look strange. So um, let's see, where did I have that? Two, three, four, five, six. Just want to make sure, just go back and forth between different stitches and just make sure that it looks good for where you want it to be. 
I think that's probably good for me. And then at this point, if you want to take the stuffing out to place the eyes, you can. I'm just going to kind of work around my stuffing and put my backing on. Do that on the other side as well. And there are our eyes placed. All right, so once we have placed our eyes and started stuffing, we're going to move on now to round 13. So for round 13, we're going to do another decrease. So we're going to do single crochet in the first and a decrease in the second. And we're going to repeat this six times again. And your stitch count should be 12 at the end of round 13. Now you may find it's harder to crochet into these stitches since we stuffed. Kind of a reason why I like to leave stuffing to the last, as far, as close to the end of my uh, project as I can, because I really don't like stuffing in there. But for this project, we have to stuff now because soon we're gonna be too small to be able to stuff. So I'm just going around doing my single crochet and decrease. There we go. And we can just continue to stuff as well as we go here. Next, we are going to do for round 14, we're just going to do single crochet 12. So one single crochet in each stitch around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Trying not to crochet my stuffing into my work here. All right, so this is going to be the end of our color um, uh, A yarn, this green yarn here. So what we're gonna do here is I'm just going to grab my scissors and I'm going to cut my yarn and after I cut it what we're going to do here is we're going to change the color so how I do that is I'm just going to actually remove that last loop of that last single crochet of round 14 and I'm going to put my hook right back on those stitches now for me to change color I find this the easiest I'm going to grab my next color which is going to be our white and I'm going to grab this new color and I'm going to finish that last single crochet of round 14 with that new color. You're not going to be able to see that. Um, so that's why the color change I feel like is seamless. And then we have our new color attached. Now I'm just going to place one single crochet here. And I'm just going to tie my ends together before I continue. I just find that easier to do. Sorry. And I'm just gonna stuff those ends in. And here is my new color. Now for round 15, which is this round with our color B yarn now, we're going to do 12 single crochets again. So I've already done the one there. So I'm just gonna continue along and do all 12 single crochets. around 15. 
just like that. Now again, we're going to change colors. We're done with our color B yarn here, and we're gonna move on to our color C yarn. So I'm first going to, again, just grab my scissors and cut my yarn. And again, I'm gonna just pull this out just so I have the last two loops of that stitch. And then I'm going to grab my next color, which is going to be our brown. So whatever you're using for your color C yarn, uh, I'm gonna be using brown. We're going to again change the color by ending that last stitch and you can make a single crochet here or you cannot whatever you find easiest i just like to tie my tails here together before moving on just so i know that they're secured sorry and i'm going to tuck those away so that they're not in my way. And I'm also just going to add some more fiber fill right here. Before we move on. Okay, so once we have our color C yarn attached, we're going to move on to round 16. So for round 16, we're going to do the combination single crochet one and increase. And we're going to repeat this a total of six times and your stitch count should be 18 at the end of this round. And now we're working into the body directly from the head. So it's just going to be one big piece, which is kind of nice for less sewing. Single crochet. See, I'm talking while I'm doing this, and so that's not good. Single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase. All right, and there is round 16 completed. Moving on for round 17, we're going to do the combination single crochet two and an increase. So one, two, increase. And again, we're going to repeat this a total of six times for a stitch count of 24 at the end. I will complete this round off camera and I'll meet you back here for the next round. All right, moving on to round 18, we're going to do single crochet 24. So one single crochet in each stitch around. So I'll just complete this off camera and again I'll meet you back here for round 19. All right, moving on to round 19, we're going to do the combination again of single crochet two and an increase. So one, two, increase. And we're going to repeat this eight times and you should have 32 stitches at the end of round 19.
All right, and that is round 19 completed. Now, next, we are going to change colors again. So I'm just going to take my scissors here and cut my tail again. And I'm gonna grab my last color, which for me is going to be that creamy color. Just grabbing it here, I have a bit of a knot. So, so it's gonna be this color, it's like an off white. And this is going to be the color I'm changing this into. So again, I'm just going to take out that last stitch and finish off that stitch with the new color. And tie a little knot there to secure the color change. There we go. And then we can move on. So for rounds 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26, so seven rounds total, we're gonna be doing single crochet 32 in this color D yarn. So one single crochet in each stitch around for seven rounds. So I'm gonna complete this um, section off camera and I will meet you back here after you've completed up to round 26. All right, so this is what we're looking like at the end of round 26. We've done all of our seven rounds here and this is where we're at. So we are going to move on here to round 27. And for this round, we're going to do the combination single crochet two and decrease. So two, now we're going back down again, decrease, oopsies, do that again. There we go. So one, two, decrease. And we're gonna repeat this again a total of eight times. And your stitch count should be 24 at the end of round 27. And that is round 27 completed. Now for round 28, we're just going to do single crochet 24. So one single crochet in each stitch around. I will complete this round off camera and I'll meet you back here for the next step. All right, so that is round 28 completed. Now we're going to stuff the body before we move on here. So same way I did with the head, I'm just going to go ahead and stuff. All right. Just gonna bring you out a little bit here. And I just finished my stuffing for what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna continue to stuff as we go here through the last few rounds, but that's all I'm gonna do now. So after uh, you've finished stuffing, we'll move on to round 29 of the body. And for this round, we're gonna do the combination single crochet one and a decrease. And we're gonna repeat that a total of eight times. And your stitch count should be 16. 
try not to grab too much stuffing when you're crocheting. This is why I find this end part the most difficult for sure. So just give yourself some grease. Just may take a little bit longer here to complete. Is round 29. Now moving on to the final round which is going to be round 30. We're going to do a full decrease round. So um, we're going to do eight decreases all the way around and your stitch count should be eight at the end of round 30. All right, I'm just going to cut my yarn here. I'm so sorry. And I'm just gonna remove my stitch marker. And I just like to place a little slip stitch and pull that all the way through. And that's just gonna knot that off for us. I'm gonna place some last minute fiber fill here just in that very bottom section that we just crocheted just to make sure that it's full enough. Next I'm going to just take my smaller 5.5 millimeter crochet hook and all I like to do to close off these rounds is I'm just going to go underneath this front or top loop of the stitch yarn over and pull the yarn tail all the way through. And I'm going to do that to each stitch. And this will just close it so that it's more of an invisible close. You're not going to really be able to see. I'm just going to pull a little bit. You can see it's closing already. I'm going to keep going around. that, pull that. So that's what we're looking like. I just have a tiny little spot left so all I'm going to do is just going to pull through a loop and I'm just going to make a little knot there to fully secure that up. Then I'm just going to weave in my tail here, my yarn end. My favorite part of working with amigurumi in the round. So much easier to get rid of your ends versus in a flat lay like a blanket. I'm just going to kind of shape this a little bit. And there is our body and head all completed. All right, so once we are at this step where we have the body and the head and everything completed, we're going to do some face shaping. So I'm going to take that medium black yarn. And again, this does not have to be uh, black um, because this is not going to be seen. So whatever you have um, on hand is fine to use. And I'm going to use my darning needle here and I'm just going to attach my yarn end to my darning needle. So to shape the face, basically what I want to do is I want to just pull the eyes in ever so slightly to create some definition to the face. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is I'm going to take my darning needle here and I'm going to insert it in the top of the eye as close to the eye as I can get it. And sometimes this can be hard, but there we go. So I'm just right in that top of the eye. Next, I'm going to push my needle over to the other eye and do the exact same thing on that side. Get it in as close as possible to that eye. So at this point, I should have two strands of yarn hanging. So with my darning needle still attached to this side, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the bottom 
of this eye, again, as close as possible, I'm going to place my darning needle and then I'm just going to push it back to the back of the head. Pull that through. Take my uh, yarn off. Now you may notice that yours doesn't go in the right spot. We want it to be in the front here. So if you have to just kind of give it a little tug to get it underneath that eye, that's where we want it. And then we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side here. So I'm just going to insert it right down below here. And I'm going to push this through into the same stitch. Now, ideally, if you were working on a project that was going to have an area that was going to be covered up, for instance, if you were making a head and a, a separate body and they were going to be covered up, you could push these into different stitches in the area that is going to be covered because if you do it in different stitches it's going to create a bit of a dimple in your work but it's going to be covered so it shouldn't matter but I do find doing it that way has a little bit more security because what happens is when you tie this off once it goes into the head it's going to loosen a little bit so just keep that in mind when you're tightening so I'm just going to pull this quite hard just to get those strands where I want them. Okay, so all we're going to do here is we're just going to pull these two strands and what you're going to notice is your eyes are going to go in. Now you don't want them to go in too far, we're really just adding a little bit of definition here. Um, so just pull your strand until you're happy with what it's looking like. And then once you are at a spot where you're happy, I am just going to tie a knot here. Make sure that I'm happy with what it's looking like. And then I'm just going to finish this off by just tying a bunch of knots. And I'm going to just cut my tails here and I'm going to weave it in. If you can kind of see that right now I do have a bit of a divot, but once I leave this in, that will go away. There we go. And there is our eyes shaped. So next we're gonna do the eyebrows. So again, I'm gonna just grab a strand of medium weight black yarn. Now this one, you will wanna just choose the color you want the eyebrows to be because this is gonna be visible. So if it's not black, just choose whatever color it is that you want um, to be the color for the eyebrows. So what we're going to do here is we're going to insert our darning needle over kind of on the side of the head just to get our needle here in the work. We're going to push it up to about here. So we want it to be in line with the top of the eye and about one stitch over. And I'm just going to pull that a little bit and leave my tail out over here. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go up two rounds and we want it to insert our needle here, our, our, our darning needle, about centered with the eye. So that's going to be kind of where I want. And then I'm going to push this over to the other side in that same spot. Now sometimes with these things you kind of have to just trial and error a little bit. So that's one. And then I'm going to try and repeat that with the other. And I'm going to push my yarn tail over to meet up with the original one if I can get it in the same hole there there we go all right so there's the eyebrows so I'm pretty happy with that I think they're pretty even so again I'm just going to tie a knot here it doesn't have to be too tight you really don't want it to be too tight or else you're going to lose the shape of your eyebrow there. And I'm just gonna cut 
those. And I'm just going to weave them in. Just like that. Now, if during that process your eyebrows got pulled a little bit, you can just go under with your darning needle to just loosen them and pull them back out. And there are our eyebrows completed. All right, so once we have all the body completed, we are going to start on the beak. So for the beak, we're gonna actually be creating an oval. So I'll show you how to do that. To start off with our color E yarn, so I'm using that orange yarn here that I had, I'm gonna start off with a slip knot. Just like that, tighten that around my hook. And then from my slip knot, I'm going to chain seven. So yarn over, pull through, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Next, we're going to skip this first chain and into the second chain from the hook, we're gonna place a single crochet, just like that. Then we're gonna go all the way around, uh, all the way down, sorry, this chain, and we're gonna place one single crochet in each of those stitches for a total of six single crochets here on the top. Four, five, and six. So normally at this point, if you were doing a straight project, you would just chain one, and turn and you would work back up this way but what we actually want to do is we want to now go into the bottom of this chain and work along there so that we have stitches all the way around the chain so what we're going to do is we're going to just turn our work upside down and I'm going to go into this stitch right here and I am going to crochet over my yarn tail as well but you don't have to do that and I'm going to place a single crochet here into that bottom stitch and I'm going to go along and place a single crochet in each stitch along the bottom for a total of six. And you're still going to be skipping the first one just as you did in the, at the beginning. So you're not crocheting into seven, you're crocheting into six. And this is what our oval is looking like. So now we have stitches all the way around. Now I'm just gonna place my stitch marker. And at this point we should have 12 stitches, six on the top, six on the bottom. So next for round three, we're going to just place 12 single crochets. So I'm just going to place one single crochet in each stitch around. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Just put it right side in, and that is the last stitch of our beak. So I'm gonna take my stitch marker out, I'm gonna place a little slip stitch here, and I'm going to leave myself about 12 inches of yarn to sew that onto the face. All right, so this is what we're looking like. So just push your project right side in, because it might have just pushed the wrong way out. And this is what we're looking like. So basically what we're going to do next is we're going to take our darning needle and our yarn end here. And we're just going to sew this edge closed. We wanna pinch this together and just sew that edge closed. Just going stitch for stitch here, all the way along to the other side. 
and I just find that this is easier when you're going to sew it on. This is kind of not a necessary step, but I think it makes it a little bit easier, especially if you're a beginner. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so this is what we're looking like. So I'm just gonna tie or make a little knot here. just to secure that. And this is our beak. So once we have our beak completed, we're going to attach it to our face. So I'm just gonna grab our duck here. Now, I kind of like the, the beak here, the bill, is it called a bill? I think it might be called that, to be curved. Um, I don't know why, I kind of just think it looks a lot cuter when it's curved down. But you don't have to, you could just make it like straight across if that's easier for you, or you could curve it, whatever is your preference. These, you know, patterns, you can adjust to make your own. So I'm gonna show you how I curve mine, but you just do what you wanna do. So first we're going to place this, um, the beak here on rounds nine and 10. So I'm just gonna count down from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So nine, I'm gonna place a little stitch a fabric pin there and this is 10 and we're going to be going from the top of round 9 to the bottom of round 10 that's where we're going to be attaching so basically what we want to do is we want to place our beak the top piece centered is going to match up with row 9 the top of row 9 so about right here now the corners they're going to curve down to the bottom of round 10. And I'm just gonna pin these, just, I mean, roughly, I'm gonna probably change them a little bit. You just wanna make sure that you're centered between your eyes, which I think pretty much centered. So you're gonna kind of be looking like this at this point. Now my darning needle is already attached to my yarn. I'm just basically going to sew this on once I'm happy with where it's placed. So I'm just gonna go through. All right, so once I'm sewn on here, I'm just going to place a little securement knot here. And then I'm just gonna push this into the back of my head. I'm just gonna shape that a little bit. Of course, this yarn does fall apart quite a lot. So I'm just gonna pull that out a little cause I just need it. There we go. All right, so there is our beak attached. I'm just gonna leave the yarn tail here to attach to something else so I can extra secure it. I always like to extra secure it stuff, especially with this yarn, because I do find that it, um, your yarn ends come out decently easy, which really annoys me, so I try and secure it as best I can. So that is the beak complete. All right, so once we finish the beak, we're going to move on to the wings here. So I'm gonna be grabbing my color C yarn, so the brown yarn that we used um, to create part of the body. That's what we're gonna make our wings out of. So to start for our wings, we're going to place a magic ring. And I just like to pre-pull my magic ring just to make sure. And inside the magic ring, we're gonna place eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pull that tight. And I'm just going to grab my stitch marker here and place that. That is round one. 
Moving on to round two, we're going to do an increase round. So that's going to be two single crochets in each stitch around. So four, five, six, seven, eight. This stitch is a little bit wonky here, so to make sure. All right. So we're just going to place an increase stitch. So two single crochets in each in each stitch around. So you should have 16 stitches at the end of round two. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. All right, moving on to round three, we're gonna do the combination single crochet one and an increase. So two single crochets in one, and we're gonna repeat that eight times for a stitch count of 24 at the end of round three. Just like that. Now for the fourth and the final round here, we're going to do the combination single crochet two and an increase. So one, two, increase. And again, we're gonna repeat this eight times for a stitch count of 32. So increase. So I will complete this last round off camera and I'll meet you back here for the next step. All right, so this is what we're looking like. So we're all done in the wings. So I'm just gonna take my stitch marker out. And again, I'm gonna place a slip stitch. And we're gonna want maybe 12 to 16 inches of yarn for the wing. I'm gonna cut that and then I'm just gonna pull that through. I'm also just gonna cut the center yarn a tad because I don't want it to be too, too long. So this is the wing so far. Now I know it doesn't look like a wing, but we're gonna make it look like a wing. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my darning needle here and I'm just going to place it on my yarn end. What we wanna do is we wanna fold this guy in half like this. And we wanna sew along this curved edge right here, stitch for stitch. So I'm just going to go in with my needle here and I'm going to just grab one stitch from one side and one stitch from the other and I'm going to pull that through and I'm just going to do that all the way along to the other side and this is just going to close this round up to make it look more like the wing we want. All right, so there we are, all sewed up on the edge there. To secure that, I'm just gonna tie a little knot. Surprise, I know. And there we have our little wing taco. Now, the last thing we wanna do before we um, sew these on is I like to create a little curve in the wing, kind of like this, so when it's on the body, it's like curved out. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my yarn on my darning needle here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna weave up through the stitches along the edge here. You're not really gonna be able to see it because that's the great thing about the fluffy yarn is really forgiving. And I'm just gonna do that all the way to I get the other side. Then I'm just gonna give it a little tug and you can see that it caused it to curve a little bit. You don't wanna to pull too hard or else it will fold it right in half. So you just want it to be a little bit curved 
We don't want it, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Once I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna, again, place a little knot just to secure that in place. If you don't put this knot here, then when you're sewing it on, that, that curve is gonna adjust. And that is our wing. So you just go back and make one more of these and then we'll meet back here to sew them onto the body. All right, so I have completed my two wings and now we're gonna sew it on. So just grab your body here. Now we are going to be sewing on the wings to rounds 17 of the head body combo here. So we're just going to have to count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this is 17 here. And I'm just going to take one of my wings. Now we want the flat edge to be facing forward when we're sewing this on. So I'm just going to place a pin there. And we just want it to be basically centered with the center of the head so it's proportionate. Just look at it from the front and make sure that you're happy with it. And once you are, we're gonna sew that on. Now I already had mine attached to my darning needle because I just sewed the edge together for this one. So all I'm gonna do is sew this on. If I can here, there we go. I'm just gonna do another one here, take out my pin. Just like that. Now, if you like the wing to be free, you can just leave this as it is. I personally like to secure the wing down a tad. Um, about halfway so that you can really see the the little curve in it and I just I like the look of it better so how we do that is what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna insert my darning needle here uh, right next to where I applied or I secured the wing and I'm gonna push it down into the bottom here of this last round of brown which is 17 18 19 I'm gonna just pull that Next, I'm going to just lay my wing down and see where that hits on there. And wherever it matches up, I'm just gonna insert my darning needle right into the wing on the underside here. Just like that. I'm gonna pull that through and then I'm gonna go right back into the body and I'm gonna push my yarn over here. To the back. I'm just going to pull that and that's just going to secure this down a little bit. It's not going to change the shape at all. It's just going to secure it down a little bit and I just find it gives it a little bit of extra um, definition of the little curve that we did of the wing. So I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm going to attach the wing and secure it down and then we will meet back here after that's all done. Okay, so I have attached both my wings and I also just moved my beak strand here to the same spot as these guys because I'm going to tie them all together. Just again, like I said, for extra security. And I especially want the wings one to be together so that it secures those down. And I'm just going to do a couple knots there. Cut my tails. And I'm just going to weave that in. There we go. We have our wings attached, our beak. And the last thing that we have to do is just attach our feet and make them. And then we'll be all done. All right, so moving on to the feet, I'm just gonna bring you guys in a little bit here. We are gonna be working again with our color E yarn. So the same orange that you used for your beak, that's the same color yarn that we're gonna be using for the feet. 
So um, and similar again to the beak, we are going to be starting off with an oval. So again, in order to create an oval, we're going to start off with a slip, a slip knot here. And from our slip knot, again, we're going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Just like that. And again, similar to how we did the beak, we are going to do our six single crochets on the top and six on the bottom for a total of 12 stitches. So we'll skip this first chain and into the second chain, place our single crochet and then all the way along to three, four, five, and six. And then again, we're going to move down to the bottom and place six more. One, two, three. I know crocheting over the yarn tail can be a little bit more difficult, but when you're making an oval, I do find it helps to avoid having any gapping in your stitches um, because it kind of just like fills that space. So I feel like it makes it look more full. So that's why I do it. So there is our second round completed, our 12 single crochets. Place my slip stitch or my stitch marker here. And we're going to move on to round three. So for round three, we're going to start off with one decrease stitch. So I'm just going to do our normal decrease like we normally do. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Next, we're going to place three single crochets. One, two, three. Then we're going to do another decrease. So into this first stitch and into the second, yarn over, oopsies. There we go. Pull through and pull through. Lastly, we're going to place five single crochets. One, two, three, four, and, sorry, there we go, five, just like that. So this is what we're looking like so far. Okay, so moving on to round four, we're going to start off again with a decrease. So insert under the front two loops there. Next, we're going to place two single crochets. So one and two. Then we're gonna do another decrease. So front loop, front loop, Yarn over, pull through. I keep doing that today. Yarn over, pull through. Then to finish off this round, we're going to place four single crochets. One, two, three, four. Just like that. Then we're going to move on to the final round here. Just going to cut that middle strand of yarn from our magic ring and stick that in. We don't want to stuff our feet, so I don't want too much bulk down there. So to finish off for round five, we're going to do four decrease stitches. So. One, two, I'm trying to find that stitch it's hiding. There we go. 
go. Three. And one more. Four. And these tight areas are hard to work in, so just take your time. There we go. And I'm just going to pull my stitch marker. I'm going to place a slip stitch into that next stitch. And I'm going to cut my yarn. So this is what we're looking like so far. You should have a triangle for the foot. It should be wider on the bottom and then this part is going to be where we sew it on. So just go back and make one more of these feet and then we will meet back here to attach them to the body. All right, so I have gone and made two of the feet here and now we are going to sew them on. So I'm just gonna grab my body here and I'm just gonna start with one foot and we're going to need our darning needle for this. I'm just gonna pre-attach my yarn just so I'm all ready to go. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna attach the feet to rounds 27 to 30 of the body head duo here. So I'm gonna count down here from the head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. Put a color on here that you guys can actually see. So it's going to be like this. So the pointed part of your foot here, if that will focus if it's not, is going to be facing down and the flat part is going to be up. So it's going to be like this. Now I like to have mine on a kind of an angle. Instead of doing it straight forward, I'm going to do mine on an angle like this. So once I have both of them, they're going to kind of be facing outward. Like that. So I'm just going to pin this in place. Just making sure that I'm happy with where it's placed, I'm going to sew it on. Now again, I don't like having my foot flap around, so I am going to sew this down as well. So I'm going to take it up to, let's see, maybe one row down from there. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did with the wing. And I'm just going to push that to the back. There is one foot attached. Now I'm just going to attach the other side here, same way I did the first side. I can never get my darning needle on. There we go. All right. And again, just going to place my other foot slightly on an angle. And I'm just going to sew that on. Oops, sorry. Okay, and then I'm going to push it up to the same row here. And 
and I'm going to push it back to the same spot where my other one was placed, the other yarn tail. So I'm just going to adjust that a little bit and make sure that I'm happy with the placement of that. And then I'm just going to tie a little knot here to secure it. Cut my tails here. And weave in the ends. So much fluff coming off. And there is our finished uh, Margot the Mallard duck. Now again, if you don't want to do all the color changing, you can just make this all yellow, all white, or whatever color you want. But there is the color changes if you do want to make the Mallard version. I hope you guys loved this tutorial. Let us know in the comments down below what you thought and if you have any other suggestions for us. Otherwise, we hope you guys have a lovely day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!